And uh, that takes us to the final match of the day, which is uh, the other matchup, I should say, in, uh, in Group B, which is uh, between David Pacman, Easy with Aces. We've been hyping this for a while, my friends, because we haven't had a match to focus on. And I feel like it's finally here. It's like a UFC main event. Wait, what do you mean you didn't have a match? Did you not just see what I did to Ludwig there? Okay. All right. I thought we moved past that one. It was just kind of like a for a funsies. What match? Know? Threw what? away my queen. It wasn't really a match. It was more just like <laughs> an exhibition. I think you're right, Levy, that this is an exciting match because it's one of the few in group stages that will actually determine something uh, outside of seeding. One will move on to winners. One will move on to the loser's bracket. And it does seem like David is a bit of a favorite here in terms of his rating, but Fenton so has bet. been... I bet. Any any betters on this one? I'll take. We're not allowed to do that as commentators, Ludwig. What do you mean? It's not like I'm 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 swaying. Check your Discord. Just... No, I'm just... <laughs> I, I I actually think Finton is is my pick to win this match. Uh, just having watched him play uh, his previous matches, he just seems very confident, and I think that's that's underrated, uh, especially in newer players. Just having confidence in your moves, being able to play faster, even if you're down, uh, rather than, you know, second guessing everything like we saw Dog Dog do mm -hmm. when he lost to Zexro. Well, I think they're both very close, even if somebody is a slight favorite. And we just have takeoff. So are we, do we have their game pulled up? Yep, we do. Uh, we have a Kara Khan and this is what Easy with Aces plays. It's the, the, the true and tried, the old reliable. He played this against uh, Hafu, and okay, David takes, which is, this is already pretty good for Black. It's actually a pretty decent position. And I think David went into a French exchange in one of his previous matchups as well, just trying to avoid some of the heavier theory. Yeah, not, not my weapon of choice uh but that's the that's the beauty of getting coaching from multiple sources is that you just can play simple chess i will say i just happened to open up finton's stream and he immediately said i don't know this line of caro khan which is bad because it's move three <laughs> yeah that that is bad I, again i see i was going to say when you said he, finton is like confident maybe maybe on, on the inside, because when he's when he talks about his chess, he's very, very kind of like humble and reserved. Yeah. He's like, I don't know this, but this isn't groundbreaking stuff. All white did was trade pawns in the center. It can't be that good. So but I just remember. Playing. Yeah, sorry. He just he just went into a sorry. One time he was playing. He went into a studio office with like a, a long chair and a fireplace, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which seems like a confident thing to do for a chess player. He does it when he plays poker too. I think he does it to kind of regroup mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, he's very, he, the, he got the hands waving. I mean, Pac-Man just looks like he's got a call out of jail, mate. Like that's his one phone call for the day. And he's this is just- like Obama looking at SEAL Team 6. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just like, <laughs> he's just studying uh, the footage. He is locked <laughs> in. That is, my, my is one focused man. Well, I mean, they have a very similar amount of focus, but I see that David isn't actually streaming this while Finton is. So Finton mm. has a bit more of a distraction. Yeah, that is true. Uh, David didn't, I don't think David didn't stream because of focus. I think it's, he might be, he has two locations and sometimes he goes to, to like his second place and his connection there is not stable and he didn't want to connect to a stream and to zoom so he chose one over the other but uh he's he's got a very very chill position here this is they're, they're both looking mighty fine but what's next so finton just played his bishop to d6 he's offering up the trade i wonder if david is just gonna go for it i feel like that's always the most straightforward plan that we've seen Pogchan so far, just going for the trade. Simplify. Knight b5, I'm showing on the board, attacks the queen, but it's not the best move because easy with aces will move his queen. That ain't going to fly here. You don't want to be a one-trick pony, right? 
Quite literally, yes. Like, but so that that queen will go anywhere safe. At what level do people stop trading? Because I feel like everybody loves trading at Pog Champs level, and then every commentator is always, you know, looking disdainfully at it. Like early I, trades. Early I, trades, I feel like, are a staple of low level play. I was gonna let Alexandra feel take that it away. Question. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can do trades at any level. Mm -hmm. I think it's when it seems like it's the only option that is considered sometimes at PogChamp's level. So I don't know if he was thinking about make, moving his queen up to d2 to defend his bishop instead and then recapturing and activating the piece. So what I usually realize is that players will go for trades even if it's a suboptimal move. And I almost never see them defending the trade with a subtle move like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have to start at, is it a fair trade? If yes, okay, play it. That's always yes. how you should start as a beginner. Just if yes, okay, by all means, go ahead if you're making fair trades. But then it's like, at some point you go, what has changed in the position? And you're, you know, for a beginner, the queen has gotten more active for my opponent isn't natural. Yeah, because it's fair to me is I took horrors, he took horrors. Seems fair, uh, but I don't consider that he will take it with a piece that's now activated uh, and pushed out into the board. Which yeah, is like, reasonable, because you don't want to have information overload when you're just starting off with chess, because it's already so overwhelming. So I think as, as coaches, we're happy to see it. I mean, you, you coach both of them, Levy. How are you feeling about their play so far? No, this is great. I, I have zero concerns with them as far as the opening goes uh, because they're not prep monsters. Whereas like somebody like Hafu, she's going to play this very logically. She's going to go, the guy goes for this opening. The best way to play against it is to surprise him with something I've never done before and play the most challenging weapon. Mm -hmm. And these guys are just like, I want to get a chess game and then we'll figure it out. So it's not even like cheesing it or something like that, where you try to win in five moves. You just try to maximize your winning chances and putting pressure on your opponent. But Finton has done everything you're supposed to do in a Karo Khan. Now let's see what comes next. Cause uh, David will, you know, is David going to take, or is David going to play F2, F4 and guard his central knight? Right. So this is one of the first opportunities where we can see David making a mistake. If, he leaves his knight hanging on e5 and ends up losing a pawn. But he goes for knight b5, so he's attacking the queen. Yep. And a move here, like queen b6 looks really good. What were you going to say, Levy? That's, the yeah, queen b6 or queen e7. Actually, any queen move which is safe and on a dark square is, is totally fine. Uh, if you go queen a6, you will run into the fork on c7, and he plays queen b6. Yeah. Like, it's good when you're playing our moves. Even Ludwig's. He's he's on fire today. He beat Alexandra. So <laughs> actually, well, I, Finton I, beat me in an odds match before. Also, boy, with what time? Did he have? I think I may have had like fifteen or twenty. I don't remember. Okay, okay. Wasn't his foray into chess not beating you when you only had a king? Yes, and he had all his pieces. How does that even work? Multiple times. That was before chess was much of anything at all. And we had a few poker people playing and, and one day there was an easy with aces, Alexander Botez crossover. And uh, now he's a thousand well, rated player. I didn't player. teach him about stalemate yet. So really I was just cheesing him. I mean, hey, wins a win or he, draws a draw, I guess. Draws a draw. A I draw, mean, draw. But he could win. But he, he's come really far since then, obviously. Um, you know, he, he plays poker and he's used to grinding out different games and he was super busy. And now he's finally had a little bit more time to focus on chess and look at the improvement. This is just a fantastic play so far. Yeah, very solid position. A lot of games like this get decided with uh, a combination of your piece play and your pawn play. So, uh, okay, so that move is an example of piece play, but he's not realizing that just moving the queen up once where there's a lingering threat in the position that Alexandra wanted to uncork with the queen where it stands. A6. And, and Ludwig, if, if you were playing this position with the black pieces, what kind of plans would you try to go for here? 
If I'm looking at the board from Black's position, uh, I mean, I think it's, for me, it's just uh, about getting Rooks in earlier. I mm -hmm. feel like people just leave them hanging, like, often, and then you enter endgame and your Rook's still on A1 or something. Oh, and you that. read his mind. There you yeah. go. I think that, does is that, it, and I know sometimes it really doesn't matter. Is that the wrong Rook? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> but it's still, in this case, it, yes. It still works, but usually, right, you want to take it, like, left half, Rook takes left side. Yeah, because then your other Rook yeah. has more options for where he can go. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the piece play, uh, David's pieces are, see, again, like this is moving far past the beginner's term. Like they're, they're standing pretty confidently, but they're poorly coordinated. And, and th that's why. Because the Knight is blocking the Queen from seeing the B2 pawn. So you need to scan what's unguarded in your position. And, and that's really the issue, is that now when the Knight comes back, if, if Finton takes now, it looks like his queen is getting trapped. I don't know if he will. I feel like he did this to stack his rooks. And the only way to stack your rooks is to get rid of that knight so you can move your rook to c7. So I think wow. that's what he's thinking is go c7, bring the rook back, stack them, rather than take. But maybe now that the knight's kind of like in this area and blocking the c file even more or cluttering it up, maybe mm -hmm. he'll see it. Uh, okay, but... let's 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 see what he's seeing. Let's go to his stream. I'm going to like attack this, but like I don't, I'm not sure. If we go, yeah, so that was a guttural right, noise. We're just gonna go back here, I think. Oh, he just so... doesn't see it at all. Yeah, that was <laughs> just, just a totally pawn. different. I, plan. I feel like he was <laughs> he was doing a lot on the right, and he just said, "Okay, he's concerned about the pawn." I see. Um... Yeah. It wasn't under threat though. I just, I guess he's just very. Cautious. Still a solid move though. He's regrouping sure. his knight, so maybe not the most accurate, but it's like one of the top five moves he could have done there. He sees the queen attack. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, he's deliberating what's the right knight square here. <clears throat> All right, right, so we gotta be square. careful because we gotta go here, and then if he attacks the square, we gotta be careful of the pin or not the pin, the fork. We're just gonna go here for a sec and start trying to potentially counter. Attack ourselves. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I would imagine that if he brings this over here, we just want to move one of these slightly so that he can't get this square and attack the two of them. See, look at that. Very nice tactical. Like he sees that that's possible if his queen's not there. So in the absence of his queen, he has to cover that threat. Like this is, yeah, this is. Two guys who are good at chess. And yeah, he's looking at like level two threats. Don't hang just, pieces. You know, hang pieces just don't hang like, pieces. Oh, Let him hang yep. pieces when he gets low on time. <laughs> exactly, Fitton. Take a swig. Take a swig. Is this trap? Good, good man. No, obviously not. Oh, and the live board has a bad move. I think Fenton immediately recognized it. Yes, I apologize. I thought I thought we were still. That's why I'm looking at this other screen. I'm still I'm still watching. No, you're him. good. You're good. Yeah um so think, th this yeah. is uh it's it's a mistake for like the most subtle of reasons really it's a positional mistake right like what does that mean so alexandra why why is this not good why did the eval bar go well, full fall guys finton finton just showed us why so he can now put his knight on e4 and that's called an outpost where no pawn can ever kick the knight out of because he put his pawn on f4, he created some light square weaknesses. So you often think of overexpanding your pawns, the square of the color they move to, so f4 being dark, then creates weaknesses on the opposite color, the light square on e4. And this move is totally busted because, again, the positioning of the knight on the edge of the board, I think that why it's, it's so busted, is, is there is b5, and not to mention the fact that everything Alexandra just said, uh, queen takes pawn. So that's really the thing. He had to maintain defense of his f4 pawn. And it's not defended. It's just a free pawn. So the two right. things, the weak pawn and the bad knight. And Well, Ludwig, do you think he's going to see taking the pawn on f4 based on his play so far? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think, I think he'll notice that it's, that it's hanging because I, noticing the knight move, I think, is harder. That now you can push your knight. Uh, and it's interesting because I feel like this game was going really well, and then it felt like Pac-Man didn't know what to do anymore. 
you know, felt like he needed to make a move. And you keep having to advance, and you never just get to not do anything. Uh, and then he kind of let Finton's moves be easier because of it. So, so I actually – I want to take it all the way back to his third move. Like, the way he played – and by the way, Finton <laughs> missed it. Oh, Finton wow. missed it. Well, okay, he's going for the, he's going for the night, though. Yes, he he did notice that he, he has this plan. So, but Finton for Finton, it was a continuity problem. He forgot that the pawn. I'm assuming we weren't listening to him, but he forgot his queen had vision on the pawn, and the other queen left that pawn B. Um, but, yeah, I actually saw him arrowing his knight to F6 and E4 before he even made the move. So it seems like it was always his plan to get the knight in the mm -hmm. center. So he just focused on that plan without necessarily completing the tactic at the end yeah again th this is only showing so drastically in 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 finton's favor despite the complete equality on the position because of a move like b5 and wow he's done it oh. and now the knight has to go all the way back to b2 good move and now his knight is dominant over the center so uh the reason it got so it, it it all ties back to move three is because David just basically traded in the center and put his pieces out, but every opening is optimized differently. And he didn't set up the, like the right way to put pressure on Finton. So now it's Finton's game to, to play for win. But you know, what's crazy. It's minus four, according to the screen and they're equal material. That like, is, that's weird. Yeah. That's annoying. That's all back to move three, you know, yeah. <laughs> that you did one thing wrong. And yeah. Then you're punished yep. so hard for it it's it's experience so finton is like very well versed in this opening but he's missing one move you know small things um and david's improvising like david could have shown up been like all right i'm gonna play this variation this is how i'm gonna put pressure on him but not everybody wants to do that not everybody wants to sit down and like try to prepare 15 you know moves in a row and that's i will say yeah. although that advantage seems drastic on the computer's reading i don't know if a player like of these caliber can really capitalize it well no. on it. No, you had to take the free material. Yeah. yeah. And so if you don't get the free material, then the position no longer matters. Yep. Uh, when, when you don't know what to do with it. And on so, top of that, Finton's time gap is getting smaller oh. now. He used to be up like a minute on the clock. Yeah. So the reason that this is so bad, I think, is because here Black can play Queen B6. And queen b6 attacks the central pawn, and you cannot protect it. Like, yeah. you cannot move your queen. And if you move your pawn, uh, then I'm pretty sure... Is there a knight takes c3 here? Oh, that's a really cute tactic. Right, and then if rook c3, you have queen d4 check. And you fork the rook with your queen and the rook. So, like, but seeing that is ridiculous. Like, if that's the only line for advantage, how are you going to find yeah. that? Yeah. Ludwig, what kind of ideas would you go for from Finton's point of view here? Oh, oh not oh. that one. Not that one. Yeah, that oh. was brazen. Why did he think that that knight could do that? We talked about it. Equal material trades go yeah, for it, right? But that knight was so good. The relative value of that knight was way more than that bishop. That bishop hasn't moved. It's been 23 moves. It moved once. Now it's yeah. gone. I think it's... I, I think... It's easiest just to take hanging pieces and you get hanging pieces when you have way more pieces that are active that can threaten things. Uh, and your opponent has still, you know, is rook on a one. And Finton so I'm still think, playing very well. I don't know, mean to cut you off. Just no, not I, you, you're not. I'm just saying, you know, in general, Finton, rather than just having to continually move the knight, which is already doing a lot, he can just bring out someone else into the party and then hopefully have advantage. And at least he has a plan of doubling his rooks on that C file. So he's still going to put pressure on C2. And that pawn is a little bit awkward to move. Because if he pushes to C3, then he won't be protected by the queen anymore, just by the pawn. And C4 is going to be quadruple protected by two pawns and two rooks. So at least he has a target to keep pushing. Right. And if you, you trade C4 the improper way, then the queen now has vision on these central pawns. Um, but the way, the, the way the game is going, it really just looks like David is, is unsure what to do. He's trying to like defend everything and chess is just like this. If you have three weaknesses four potentially, you can't defend them all. You just can't like, there is a way through, but Finton has to find it. 
Well, Pac-Man has been playing his defense very well. He did see how to maneuver his horse all the way back to protect the pawn on F4. Now his knight is in the center. Um, I'm just getting a little bit nervous. Uh, two minutes versus three minutes. How much of a difference do you think that'll make, Ludwig? That's huge, right? Uh, like when it, obviously a minute time difference. Uh, it's 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 going to stay that way likely. Just they're probably going to keep playing the way they play. That's something I think about a lot. Is like the way they play early game is likely how they'll play late game, or it's how they're comfortable playing. So best mm -hmm. case or worst case scenario, they'll just play worse. Uh, and so I, I think the way they're playing. I don't think Pac-Man has any really attack strategies thought about and Fintons hasn't been working. Uh, I'm kind of nervous. I think this will go down to time. I really am, am, am hesitant about this move that David just played. That Rook on A2, not C1. I mean, they're both a little bit sus. <laughs> they're they're <laughs> uh, not yep. happy. Wow, why do you look at the other side of the board? I think he's just getting nervous because his pieces are so cramped on the left side that he feels like he needs to get some activity somewhere. Sure and then he he's doing something that he knows is a little bit suspicious. You don't want to push the pawns in front of your king, but you also don't want to lose on time. How do you pick? Yeah, I feel like where this is, this is where it all implodes. Like they're very even game in terms of points. It's about to, oh. I mean, that's a fine move for Finton. It's a little bit passive, but yeah. his opponent is the one with all of the weaknesses, yet his opponent is the one pushing forward here. And Finton sees the discovery attack on the rook on C1, the fact that the pawn on C2 is pinned. Very nice find on his end. Yeah, that, that, that actually is very nice. Sometimes when you have two rooks like this it's not just about the straight down attack it's about sliding over one square and the rook on the on the back rank is just stuck but oh this is good i like this a lot f6 he is creating counterplay there even if it's not accurate at least it makes finton sweat a little bit would you be intimidated to see a pawn on f6 ludwig uh, yeah i mean th this is like they're both just attacking and no uh, one's defending it feels like he just caged <laughs> he just caged this bishop but he can uncage him with g5 later not if not if david pacman plays the absolutely gangster move g5 himself i that's don't think that's true. even a thought that will cross his mind <laughs> Oh my, I mean, yeah, I don't think so. I think what's much more natural is to play queen h4, queen takes pawn, and queen, H, queen g7 mate, which might happen. Wow. His, his plan is actually kind of working out. Depends on the execution, but Pac-Man's only going to have a minute to come up with a plan, and I feel like he's going to sink so much of his time on a winning strategy here. So if he finds it, he has a chance. Otherwise... He's going for it. Uh, yeah. That move might run into G5, by the way, for yeah. Black. I think right. pretty clearly, right? feels supernatural for anyone to put G5 up. N not, not, well, he, like, he might do it, but it, Finton might be the kind of guy that's like, I don't want to push pawns in front of my king. I'm going to dro drop my queen all the way back, but that would be a big mistake. Or he pushes on the right. This feels like the chess version of slap boxing. Where they're, what is that? You ever see like the, the Russian where they just slap each other as hard as they can? Oh, yeah. That's like what's happening. They just keep <gasps> slapping. Yeah. <gasps> they're ignoring everything. They're just slapping each other and then they get hit and they never, ever, ever mm -hmm. think about blocking. They David just go just for the next slap. David thought about blocking. David, actually, no, you're right. He slapped. No, his slap is slapping. bigger. They're just slapping. No one's ever defending what's happening on the <sighs> other side of the board. The issue with this is that Finton has to defend the g7 square with his queen, but then if Pac-Man trades off queens, there's going to be no more protector for his work on a3, and you can yep. tell from Finton's face that he, he realizes something went down. Oh, no. And we're listening in on him. Damn, glasses off. I don't think that's really ah, good to see Okay, that. maybe time-wise he won't close it out, but this is not good. Oh man, he uh, uh okay, we gotta just play quick, right? Fuck. Okay, yeah, let's just let, let's 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 bring it back to the big board. I mean, you know, it's like.
It's like in the UFC when they don't, you don't get an interview if you just get knocked out. Like, yeah, like you don't, you don't zoom in on the injured player. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, look at them in pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, like but it's pretty a, sick attack from, from, from Pac-Man. Yeah. Wow. That F, F6 talent. was really good. It actually was really good. Yes. And I really think it was just neither player ever looking to defend the attack that was happening to them at any point. Right, and at some point, you just want to halt all of the threats before you carry on with your plan. Mm -hmm. Still, I mean, Fintan has an extra minute here, and he has one pass pawn, so there's still a chance. Oh, oh no, A4 has to be played. Yeah. Okay, Rook B8. Oh, now David just goes Rook A8. He, he could just clean this up. Actually, Rook B5, even. You can... Okay, style points, Levy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see, Knight A6, not, you, got, you gotta trade you got to trade. And the story of the sad bishop on h7. This was a good game. I mean, whatever happens, it was actually like just the, it was a good fight. And credit to Pac-Man for bringing it back. I don't know if it's over yet. With the time constraint, uh, he's going to have to move fast. And I don't think sacking a rook is natural. Ooh, b3. That's a nice find. C takes yeah. b3 doesn't work because the rook on c1 is hanging. Oh, what? And he's back. 30 wow. seconds is getting to Pac-Man. Oh my goodness. He, and he's played G5. If Pac-Man had ever played G5, his bishop would have just been stuck. He just unfreed the beast, oh, got back material. Wow. Damn, this is uh this Oh my is, god. This is a swingy game. Oh, Ludwig, whoops, sorry, you sorry, called sorry, sorry. it. You said it wasn't over. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, 30 seconds left. Levy's talking about these mating patterns like they're so <laughs> obvious. <laughs> like just I offered a trade of rook. rooks. You were offered a trade of rook. It looked like the dumbest move a man could make. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking, I mean, you have 36 seconds to make the best move possible. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, well, let's put it this way. After that lesson with... Uh, well, actually, after that game with Hafu... Um, I thought that Mr. Pacman got a few endgame training sessions in, but you're right. At the end of the day, it's just the time. And this is only losing because he's supposed to go after the weakness of the F7 pawn, but Finton's back in this game. He's actually forcing Finton to activate his king, which is something he wants to do regardless. So he's helping his opponent without realizing it. Yeah, I think that's a very common thing to have happen is that you don't activate your king unless someone threatens it, and it's mm -hmm. usually bad for you to do that. Unless there's a way to, you know, force the king into a mate. Right. He, he's going for that serotonin check. It feels good. It has a threat. He moves quickly. Oh, man. You could really mess up here. Oh, man. This is this is really dangerous. I mean, the, the time management. Now check and pick up the pawn is the easiest. Or great move. Yeah. Wow. Now you've got to move the rook all the way back. 12 seconds, though. You guys think we're going to see a flag here? I mean, he should know about the time. I just, I, I think eventually he'll get hit with a move that he won't be able to mentally deal with quick enough. Whether it's a check on his king right. or something like that, that'll just eat up too much time. He's taking like more than five seconds per move right now. Oh, oh no. Is this uh, going to be the move? Okay. He got it in there. And yeah, Vincent, sure. uh, this might be it. Vinton's actually playing extremely well with the time. Is well, he going to see the pawn on b3 also? He should, he should, he should. Right, and there's also rook d3 check. You can start picking up everything. David Pacman has to have a moment here where he uh, he goes either for the f7 pawn or some fork with the knight. Like, don't give up. Someone in my chat today said, you can never give up as long as a knight is on the board. And I said, that's stupid. And then I won with a knight fork in a, in a crazy time scramble. I <laughs> never remember resigned that now. one viewer. Did you VIP him at least, Levy? I, uh, you know, tier three sub um, and, and, and the whole deal. Yeah, I, I'm never resigning. He's got two oh, seconds. Yeah, wow. <gasps> the I, I rook think... is hanging. Is he going to see the rook hanging? He's got to move the rook. Rook D, wait. Oh! Did he blunder the rook? Is that yeah, official? Yeah, yeah. yeah he yep. did. He did. He blundered the rook. Oh this no! It's good for him because now he won't even be in check with the bishop. So well, he can make now a if the rook checks him, he's taking away the defender from the king, but he can attack the rook so right. that his bishop is actually surviving. I think the best thing he could do is just keep putting Finton in check because one, it'll make Finton have to think about his move, and two, we'll just give him but time. This is so hard to win because you mm -hmm. have to get the g5 pawn or the f7 pawn. The only way to win. <gasps> no! <gasps> he lost oh! the ball! 
No, he missed it. He missed it. Fitton missed it immediately. The bar is going absolutely Oh, Fitton walks get away. Back in your chair. Oh, Why look at me. I've got a full minute, and, and I'm just, just like acting as if I've got 20 fast, seconds. You move fast, but he had a minute oh, 43 of the clock. Guys, the didn't only way to, in a second. The only we're, way to win this. Oh, paper, my days. Fenty, Fenty, Fenty. All right. I have loads of time. Every I, I don't need to be panicking like this. True. Why am I just not yeah. taking my time really and taking well. his pieces and not blundering? We were doing lovely. It was perfect. Oh no. Cool. Oh, he's back in it. Let's put it, let's pull it up. Let's pull it mm -hmm. up. Let's pull it up. That was actually a huge move. That was a big lesson there. Um Finton centered himself right at the critical moment. I'm not sure you guys if, if you guys saw like the threat was to take the bishop, and that's it. He's winning again. This is this is his game to win. But it's still a very tough end game to understand. Don't how push the pawn. Win. Do not push the pawn and lose your bishop. Good man, bishop g six. Cool. It's 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 difficult, but not impossible because you just push your pawns, right? Like that's. I think pushing pawns is incredibly strange, and you end up. <laughs> Like well, you gotta, you got no way to win this. <laughs> sometimes just getting boned, and it feels like you shouldn't have gotten boned. That's a very, yeah, that is a good way of looking at it. Sophisticated Grandmaster way Ludwig. to explain it, yeah. Ludwig. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, but... he's activating his king, which is a good attempt, but it's not going to be able to come farther because f five is protected by the pawn. No draw. F6. I think. Pac-Man would Ludwig? love a draw here. I think Pac-Man would be super happy if he could find a draw here. And and easy with aces just says no thanks. No thanks. Again, I think these checks are just to get five seconds on the board real quick. And oh, and here comes the king. Oh. Strategy. oh, he's thrown his pawn. He's given his pawn away on F6. I don't know if Pac- Oh, he does see it. Oh, my goodness. He got two amps up. Bishop has to move. I mean, when his brain is only thinking about check to add time to see that pawn, I think it's pretty hype. This is an insane game. This is a 76 move game right now. We might get 100. Wow. Well, we weren't kidding when we said this is going to be one of the closest matches today. Now, Finton has to find the right coordination of moving his bishop and pushing this pawn. Yes, it's equal, but it's equal because black actually, in theory, cannot make any progress. Because if you do, like the bishop here, I play rook up. And I take your pawn. So the bishop has to stop that from happening. Uh, and the players don't know that, which is why this is so beautiful. Yeah, this is definitely not a draw. The computer's wrong. I'll say it. Computers are dumb. And when they become advanced and they come after me, I, I will regret it saying that. I, it was me. Uh, <laughs> it was Levy. It was Levy. <laughs> I said that. Uh, I, uh, think, I think something will, will erupt here. And he has here... to. Yeah. I was... Go ahead. I was going to say, there's no way he can defend his pawn on g5, so the only counterplay he can get... <sighs> oh, this is yeah, crazy. They're playing this is Oh my gosh. The, the two pawns are about to happen. He's got to be really damn careful, because if this g-pawn goes, it is faster than... Oh man, I don't like bishop e4. What happens when I just push? Right, you're not stopping the pawn, and you're blocking your own pawns from pushing forward here. Now, oh no. g6 is still... A <laughs> no, I think it should be. This should be lost. Okay. Weird to not push e6. I feel like that was pretty. <gasps> oh, now he, had... he can play rook eight, king h5, and now yes. the pawn can't move forward. So it oh, should should be Tremendous. able to hold now. Strange decision. Why did you find it strange? Well, I just you're obviously like pushing the pawn. I don't know what that rook move did at all. Wow. Oh my that's god. That's so clean. Blocking the rook from defending the pawn on g5. Wow. That's, that's actually brilliant. And now if if Pacman plays something like rook e8, you know, trying to get his own another pawn for himself. What? So that's it. He lost the pawn. It, that's what was it. That king move. Well, there was nothing he could have done. He can't defend his pawn. Well, so. he could have attacked the other pawn. No. Then he would have lost the rook. That's what I was saying. Oh, then Bishop see, takes rook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, oh, that's not the right move because of that. That is, you get blockaded. You have to avoid this. And Man, this Dvorsky is somewhere cringing. <laughs> <laughs> it is the eternal pog champ. Oh, that's it. Shuffle, draw, get out of here. Draw. Oh yeah. I think they're what? both happy to take it at this point. 91 move draw. Wow. wow. I wow, remember wow, wow. somebody said we aren't going to see any draws in pog champs. Here it is. Yeah. That, that gets a clap from us. That was a good game.
That was, and now we have a second game coming up in like two minutes. We don't even take a break. Let's keep on rolling. Yeah, that was game. like, I think both sides had pretty clear advantages, possibilities to win. Yeah. And both threw it away. It seems like a fair result. Yeah, that's, that's honestly just the way you put it. Like uh, chess, when it's not with super GMs or uh, frankly, like master level players or computers, you don't know that it's so drastically in the favor of one side or the other. It's like a sporting event, you know? Plus seven, minus seven, it's just points. Put the ball in the hoop, in the goal. <laughs> just keep playing. Love you watching sports. <laughs> I do, I, I do. Uh, put the hoop in the ball, there you go. <laughs> That's not what I said. I'm messing with you. I think uh, I'm surprised about to a draw, I'll be honest. I think they played it incredibly well with time crunch and uh, and like a weird, weird end game that I'm sure neither of them have really played before. Oh, that, yeah. I, that's, yeah. The, this was one of the best played games I've seen so far in Fog Jams. And we're off to the next one. So now Finton has the white pieces and they don't even get a break to, to calm down from the nerves. They're probably a little bit shaky. Yeah. Uh, for, for the fact that Hafu had to sit and wait for XUC to wake up for like 20 minutes before getting an official default, like we could have given them like an extra two minutes. Come on, guys. <laughs> These guys just <laughs> back into them. it. Sweat it out, man. Look, they need to be in the mindset. Okay. I think this is going to be a King's Indian defense from David Packman. So, uh, did you help him with this opening at all? Mm, I, no, no, actually. Like, not helped for this match, but okay, couple. Okay, that's just a losing mistake. Wait, what? Because knight e4. Yeah, knight e4 just wins on the... What is, okay, I wouldn't I mean, say win on the spot. He's going to end up winning a pawn, which, you know, it's not the end of, of yes. the game. Oh, my goodness. And David has spotted it. He's not even pre-moving. He's just... <gasps> wow. Why is that so good? So he's queen to c1? Yeah. yeah. And then... But then take, take. Mm -hmm. And then take on d4. Oh, okay. And... I see, I see. You're up a pawn. You're threatening this. Oh my goodness! Wow, what a mistake! It's a very good start for Pac-Man, but again, I know that you know Levy. You do commentary on Hikaru Magnus, and this would be completely winning if either side had it. But I, I'm not gonna call it yet. I think I it's. You know. Think that these guys are at that level or close to it. No <laughs> From disrespect. From the past to the... game we saw. Yes. Are you confident he sees Bishop? Oh, yeah, he didn't even see it. And Alexandra just proved a point, and David Packman did not see Bishop takes pawn. God, you guys damn give it. low players too much credit, man. I, I <laughs> like, I saw the thing. I saw the fork, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah!" And then I saw the defense in the fork, and I was like, "Ah, damn it!" And that's um, where my thoughts ended. Um, and I'm sure Pac-Man was with me on that one. I'm angry. I gotta, I gotta record a happy one million YouTube subscriber celebration for, for clip. David. Yeah. Yeah, for David, and I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna be like David. You, you, bas <laughs> you don't know how bishops move anymore, man. Like on the biggest stage, you forget that. <laughs> happy million, but this piece moves diagonally, buddy. Yeah. You, you, you. Oh my god, I can't even. Mm, okay, game goes on. I mean, I just I'm just cheering for good chess, and I'm cheering for chat energy, and we've had <laughs> high energy for like two hours now. So, but why? What is the Pac-Man joke? Uh, like just Pog Champ. Pac oh, I'm assuming because they're doing oh, then, Pac Champ. Then they could have put Pogmon. Uh. Well, no, because his name's Pac-Man. So Pag, Pac, Pag, and they're doing Pag Chomp, Pagman. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. Catching up on the Twitch lingo. You think I'd get it by now? We're getting there. We're, listen, all of all of Twitch chess, as, as as much as we work to fit in, it's only been about three and a half months since we learned about every emote, right? Like, we're getting on our feet, but take it easy on us. Well, it, David definitely took it easy on Easy with Aces <laughs> here. That was not my smoothest transition, but I tried. <laughs> you did. <do. laughs> it's all right. Um, so the pawn on F6, it's a very awkward position to have a pawn. How intuitive do you think it is for him to push it twice? Ludwig, would you go for a move like F5 here? I think it's it's like it's a it's a it's a backdoor trick. So uh, like that bishop actually sees a lot, but it's blocked by your own pawn. So you mm -hmm. save it until you can find a really good threat. So maybe like right now he pushes up his pawn 
and then, you know, uh, maybe baiting white into taking that pawn. If you do that, then you push it, and then you're threatening the pawn on b2, which threatens mm. the rook. Yes. I like it. So it's this. like you're like you're basically saving your 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 little back door. Very sneaky. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do with it. I feel like Pac-Man and I are in similar wavelengths and I think I think he sees that. So he probably won't push it unless he sees a clear threat that he can do with it. And I think that's maybe why he's trying to remove uh the piece on d4. And Fenton decides to leave the pawn on d4, which is actually one of the more difficult decisions to make whenever you have a trade you're tempted to take it or to push it but mm -hmm. he continues developing which I, I like he's going with a very straightforward castle your king as quickly as possible plan which is a very different than we saw in our first game today yeah, i think centered pawns it's the one piece where you're like "Ugh, i guess i won't throw it away because my coach will yell at me <laughs> do you actively think about coach or the best move on the board Every opening, I thought about Hikaru for minutes on end while I did the room, the exact things he told me not to do. All <laughs> did I you ever have about, nightmares of Hikaru yelling at you? Yeah, just his face grimacing and like, ugh. ugh. That, was that thing, yeah. <laughs> that's all I'm thinking about when I'm fucking up my uh, opening. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, see, that's why I told my parents early on, no coaches. And they're like, but you're never going to fulfill your potential. I was like, no coaches. <laughs> see, that's. And they were, and they were wrong. <laughs> you're doing it big and great there you hey. go levy oh i i was gonna say they totally were right i didn't become a grandmaster so you know uh, uh but you know well bishop e4 close. so he's moving his bishop twice mm -hmm. and he's putting pressure on b7 which it's a nice threat but it's very easy to stop and it was stopped now don't take the knight because then you just get a nice bishop okay yeah. Again, it's minus two, but like it's equal. Why is it minus two? You know what, Levy? Let's just ignore that computer for now. It does yeah. not matter. The computer is wrong. This is the one place where Ludwig Chess, have you guys heard the good game of Ludwig Chess? Um, no, what is Ludwig Chess? It's where you play chess, but the computer analysis is next to the board at all times and you can see it. Interesting, but you, yeah. you can't play. I guess you're just doing practice games. Well, yeah, but like both, yeah, both players would see it, so you'd be playing better. I think it would throw people. Oh, off. both players would. Yeah, oh. yeah, both players see it. Both players see it. Oh, I thought you just admitted to cheating. Okay, no, I was no, like, no. I was both like, players get to like, see the analysis. Now, uh, both players get to see it. I think it would mess with people's minds to see minus two, and you think you'd have a sick tactic. Right, it's just dumb position stuff. Yeah, so you're not even. You're oh. saying just the eval bar. He's going for it. He's going to for see it. The eval bar. Guys, he's going for it. Yep, he is. He does see it. The back door. The bishop. The bishop. Yeah, the bishop back door. Idea you've been dreaming trust, about. Trust. Trust. It's what Pac-Man has dreamed of. It's what I've dreamed of. Oh yeah. man, and and Finton cannot defend both the knight and the b2 pawn, so he might mm -hmm. as well go for something tricky. Yep. Yep. Pac-Man won't miss it. Oh, uh, that was a big mistake because now yep. when he moves. What did knight, I tell you guys? You're right, Ludwig. You you found the back door. Oh, it's beautiful. This is beautiful. Oh, you should I love the way Pac-Man's playing. We should, right? Yeah, and Come add on. it to your old, you know, PogChamp score and take that win away from Charlie. Is the bad thing here, especially that he moved his knight to block the rook, so now he can't even take the bishop? Yes, you nailed it. Yeah. yeah. So it's not only like he messed up on letting that happen in the first place, he messed up defending it too. Yeah, his, his one hope now is to play knight c3, block out this bishop completely, and just do what David did last game. Just shred open the position with the pawns. Because the position's so closed, you can't do anything. So you have to play moves like F3, maybe G4. Otherwise, how are you going to create counter any sort of counterplay? Yeah. I don't... Is this... Is this, oh, this is Fenton thinking right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He's in a really losing spot. And I, there's no amazing trick he can do. I don't know if he's trying to look for one. Yeah, well, he's, I mean, also just recovering from missing that. He missed it. He missed Bishop takes pawn. Yeah. I mean, the only thing he can try to go for here is take advantage of the fact that David still has his king in the center of the board and try to open the position up as quickly as possible before he castles. So something like F3. It's not winning, but it, at least it gives him some chances. Uh, let's hear what he thinks about it. I'm curious. Interesting. 
and he goes for that plan. That's yeah. that's nice to see. Yep. F three played. Now he has to just follow up. I want to trade. Right. Even yeah, like, at I know least I don't want to trade, but like, yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, I like his title Pog Champs match to be in the winner's bracket or the all caps losers <laughs> bracket. Because, like, an emphasis was put on purpose. <laughs> yes, a little bit. So, Matt, I didn't convert the last game. Oh, wow. Still holding on to that. That's tough. It's That's probably... chess, man. That's it's chess. just deflating. It's very deflating to have to think about how you could have won a previous so game while mad. you're still playing a game. But don't you feel like you do that with any game, not just chess, when you have multiple rounds? Hell no. Only chess. <laughs> for, for me, only chess. I don't know about Ludwig. I, I, I think I mean, it's just bad mentality, so I try to move on from it. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. That's like, I think good. it's bad, and I hate, what, especially in team things, where people are talking about the last round of whether oh, it's Fall Guys or Valorant. The there's another round of, that we're playing Why right now. Just it's just Aww. a waste. Oh, okay. Well, as far as that goes, yeah, that, that does. I mean, it's, I play Overwatch. It's, it's always someone else's fault. I've never, ever been in a lobby where someone went, yeah, my bad. You know, <laughs> that was me. Only when you play with friends, they're like, yeah, I wasn't healing enough. What? I thought you were supposed to, what? Okay. I don't even know who I'm supposed to be mad at now. So wholesome. <sighs> yeah. No, chess is brutal. Um, and it well, can affect you game to game. At least he, you know, took on D4 now. Um, David is going to have to find some way to get his king into safety because he's up a full rook. But while the position is closed, you're not really playing with those two rooks yet. Right. Exactly. And if he doesn't castle, like, he brought his bishop back just now. And his logic was probably, I don't want my bishop to get stuck. But what I always challenge him, easy with aces, like any, any of these guys, it's like, okay, don't just say my bishop is going to get trapped how what's the move and if there isn't a move it's not going to get trapped his only issue is he needs the castle and if he doesn't do that Vinton has a chance because like alexandra said if you don't castle how are these rooks ever getting activated don't know what he's going to play here he should castle by the way probably it's probably the best move i think he's um, set up oh he did it yeah Nice job. I think he set up really well because last game, I mean, I think part of the reason why I went to a draw is because he was down a minute and time is really even this game. It is. Yeah. Well, I, then going back to Finton's position here, Levy, if you're trying to be as tricky as possible, now your opponent castled, how are you going to try to cheese him? Um. Yeah, so... I don't know because <laughs> my, my my first instinct was to take this bishop and then try to push, right? But right. like, okay, I move. He just he just can't get in. I mean, you check the guy with your queen. The queen can take a pawn maybe, but probably this though. Probably if I have to choose something, get the queen into the center, try to go wooden shield, not quite. But it's difficult. You there, there, you can also run into the problem in this kind of a position where if you trade too much, you activate your opponent's pieces all of a sudden. Right. Cause so another strategy could just be trying to play it safe, something like knight f2, which is incredibly difficult to see. Um, and you're just trying to hold down the fort, protect your pieces, and hope that David stays too long, thinks on time, and mm -hmm. you get lucky in the end. Feels like the opposite's happening, and Fenton's thinking a little too long. This is a this is a minute move. A minute move, and I'm guessing half of his thought went probably just to realizing the blunder and getting over that. From what we found out listening in on his stream. Yeah. Well, Ludwig, so you have this super healthy gamer mentality. Did you always have that, or was there a pivotal moment for you? Pretty much came out the womb of pro gamer. Yeah, it came out yeah. with a little controller. <laughs> well, but. Pro gamer and you know healthy mindset aren't yeah. the same. So how, true. How did it actually, actually true. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just think. Uh, I mean, it's just like I think I'm generally optimistic, which helps a lot in you know things where you have to deal with like a loss. Uh, like so taxes? not beating yourself up. Yeah, like taxes. Exactly. I think the the only time I ever beat myself up is when I can't do anything about it anymore. 
Because like, if you can still do something about it, then why the mm. fuck are you wasting your time thinking about how you lost when you can literally change the outcome? But if you lose, lose, then you can be sad. Only then can you give yourself the time to give yourself pity or regret or whatever. But if there's still a chance to do something, why, why are you wallowing in self-pity? Wow, did you just give Chad a motivational speech? I it's think true. I think they're just uh, talking about Chad's and Dormies right now. Chad is in a very, very heated discussion. Let's please not interrupt them. It's like <laughs> whacking a beehive. I'm afraid. <laughs> I don't know who's winning, but one is. Yeah, I, don't worry. We, we see on there's, there's also, you know, others. I see, I see Val kids in there. All right. Anyway, um, back to the, the board. David's thinking, mm -hmm. which is good, but not for four more minutes. Yeah, minute move into minute move. They have been very much great rivals, doing a lot of things similar. And it's really been who makes the last blunder. Um, or I guess in the last one, just repeating the position because they both panicked a little bit. Yeah, I think Pac-Man recognized he had a pretty big lead, probably the biggest of either, uh, either of them. Last game, that was a draw. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he doesn't want history to repeat itself. So he's going for queen takes h2. Uh, that's a pretty annoying threat for Finton to deal with because if he pushes one of the pawns, then he'll create a weakness. If he puts his rook on h3, it feels a little bit like awkward positioning. Rook h3, huh? Hey, I got a prediction. Uh, you could play rook h3 here. And rather than going all the way back, he's going to go, well, why don't I just like centralize the queen somehow? I, I mean, I know you can take on c4, but... You could somehow get your queen like trapped in the center of the board in some crazy turn of events. I'm just looking for some sort of sign of life from Finton. He can't spend a minute on every move. At some point, he does have to start mm -hmm. playing a little bit faster. All right. Well, let's hope that he sees rook h3 just to make things more interesting because that gives black the most tricks he could potentially fall for. Yeah, g3 or h3 is like also playable. Taking the bishop to just get rid of that threat completely to play knight takes bishop like i said you got five pieces left and okay he, he does it, it. Nice he does job. it he does it but now he's got four pieces left so simple math at some point you will unfortunately run out and why is david thinking here i think he just yeah he's very caught he just does not want it to end up like last game okay, okay. and, so and he, you have time right you have time and you have a lead true but if 10 moves from now you have 30 seconds, then it's like, we didn't need to spend 20 seconds on pawn takes, right? We just- I, Well, it's also like, it's very, it, it's, it can be as simple as my opponent took a minute. So let me take longer because maybe they did something clever. Interesting. Potentially. You think that your opponent's taking longer because they're doing something smarter, when in reality, they're usually just fucked. <laughs> but I usually think if my opponent takes a minute that, damn, they probably did something insane here. Right. <laughs> Or, okay. yeah, in my case, anytime I'm playing Hikaru and he's thinking, and then the chat relays to me that, uh, oh, wait, something's happening on this board right now. That is a potentially brilliant trap. But when I play Hikaru, they're saying, oh, he's showing his computer parts or doing a house tour. And I'm like, damn it, yeah. I thought I made him think. Yeah, you know? You're bobbing to Ava, yeah. yeah. Um, Queen takes pawn is losing now. Right, I you think get bishop b3, pinning the queen and the king. That... Do you Would think he insane. set that up on purpose? Oh my gosh. No way. No way. Um, Leto, you think he just walked into that Absolutely not. Idea? I, don't, I don't think, even if he takes the pawn, I don't know if Fenton would see it. He could just be trying to do what I said, like set up the queen check. and mm -hmm. See, the problem with a move like d6 is all of a sudden your opponent goes, oh, I can move my bishop here. You know, I never was able to do that before. And I'm attacking a rook. So... I'm going to play bishop c6, and you accidentally help them. But I will say there's a lot of options for black here, and whenever you have a lot of options, you might start thinking too much on a ton of different moves, and he can't do that right now. Queen Place g4. queen g4. Okay, push the h pawn. Bait him into taking the pawn, because he moved. Yeah, that's a good idea. Once to the right, so if you attack the queen, he's going to keep looking to the right. And take the pawn and run into bishop b3. Imagine. That's, that's a good idea in theory. I think what would happen if he pushes the h pawn is he's not pushing it with the idea of that. You know what I mean? He's just pushing it to get the queen out of there because the queen's stressful. Yeah, that also is true. He also could just give him a check with the queen himself. 
Uh, he's got two minutes. Based off game one, the check makes more sense. Yeah, because they remember how they just kept yeah. attacking and never defending. Yes. You, you got their is, playing style down, Ludwig. Yeah. This is still kind of inconvenient because if you, I told David Pakman a long time ago, don't pin yourself when you get into checks. He would block a lot. Right now, if he plays rook in front of king, it's a good move. It might be the best move because you're bringing your second rook. But that's the tricky thing. You know, that thing comes in like, oh, I shouldn't pin myself. But it's not general. It's just more often than not, if you're in an equal position, just move your king to the side. Mm -hmm. But if he does that now to the corner, Finton plays queen takes pawn check. It would be hilarious to see really? him then put his king back on G8, give another check, and get another repetition. I know it won't happen, but that no would be way. such a fun Armageddon. No, he has I mean, to block. Yeah. I think he's probably looking. Oh, and he does it. Good. That's the right thing to do. At taking. Oh, oh wow. no. I don't I don't like that. You don't want to get rid of your pieces here. You, you don't have many left, right? I so... thought he was going to take the pawn on B7, to be honest. Yes, he actually, his queen could have taken three pawns. Yeah. Could have taken c5, e5, b7. Uh, oh, yeah. but if, wait, if pawn takes here, rook g3 wins the queen. Right, so he is setting up a trap. Again, we don't know. <gasps> oh! Oh, oh my goodness, rook g3, he has Finton, to see it. This well, has let's see, let's to see. be your comeback. Oh, no, he's hovering over his knight. Yeah, I don't oh, think he no. sees it, man. He dropped the knight, he dropped the knight. Oh, and, and David's realized that. Look at David's face. David is, is, is yeah. and he's played it. It's on the board. Oh, oh my gosh. Clutch gamer. Oh my gosh. Vincent. Holy smoke. Almost let's, seems like in shock. Oh, let's, let's go to his stream. I nearly didn't see it because I'd lost fucking hope. Oh no. How long was that there for? Have exactly. I missed this for several moves? No, it's just this move, right? Oh man, I nearly missed it because my head was up my fucking yeah, arse mad at the last up. game. Yeah, that's why you gotta bounce back. Alright, let's get let's get this on the big screen. I mean, he is he is locked in. He is locked in. And Alexandra, you and I have played a lot of competitive chess. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly how it feels. You are playing last round's game during your current game. You are just wallowing in anger and sadness and disgust. Okay, so how does and he do I hear now? Ludwig talking about this positivity, but you know when you're used to giving your no. uh, your heart to a game, it's so hard to get over it. Oh yeah. my gosh, take everything. The queen just gonna go destroy everybody. Also, when you play a game like poker, where at the end of the day you play right and you can blame RNG chess, you just can't, and you right. always have to blame yourself mm -hmm. and you always have to take all the fucking you know the front of the load. Well. So one minute versus two minutes, that's actually a huge time difference. But playing against two rooks is very tricky. Yeah, and a, he, yeah. and a bishop. Yeah, and a bishop. I guess yeah. that knight isn't active just Yeah, that yet. knight hasn't done anything. It, it literally hasn't moved. Oh, and he hasn't seen it. Queen takes pawn there was, was winning because he maintains defense. And now David has to find rook to e4 probably, I would imagine. Or, yeah, he's got a crazy coordination here where his rooks cover the king completely. Like, his king is totally safe. Big big brain moves in the, in the uh, chess.com chat saying, move the knight. Um, they are not wrong. You should do I that. Bet. Okay. Yeah, he, he took to so much time. First. David wow, took he... so much time when he was ahead, and he's now down. I think he was up by a full minute at one point. So now the rook should block. Mm, king of fate might be possible with queen coming in. Black's king is safe. The rooks and the bishop cover. But how, how long do you think he should be spending on moves like this, Levy? Well, look, I don't blame the man. I mean, he's going through everything right now that Finton was going through mm -hmm. the whole game. He, he was winning. I mean, he's just winning and he blunders and now he's like, damn it, I got to pick myself up. Guys, it's the same time situation as last game. 140 versus 20 seconds. So... Do you, we'll see if Finton learned from his mistakes because yet last game he kept playing quickly when David would play quickly. So maybe he'll realize he has more time. I think he would absolutely be so sad if he did it twice in a row where he threw away a lead. Yeah, uh, I don't think he could handle that. So I think I think he will try everything in his power to play really slow and smart, which also, might also end up screwing him. <laughs> true there's there's no perfect way he's is he finally going to get his knight into the game because that rook is inviting the horse into development yeah 
Damn, I don't, I don't love that he's taking a minute on this. Oh my gosh, are we gonna get another repetition? King G seven, queen back. I okay, don't he's think blocked so. It. He blocked rookie, it. Rookie six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He has to. Be, Finton has to move his knight. He's just but forgetting. But hopefully the, not now. Hopefully nah, he yeah. takes care of his queen first. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's not a bad move at all. I mean, you just again, you got to hunt the pawns down. You're only gonna win. Oh no! Oh no! Queen c5. Oh no! Wait. Uh, yeah. Queen c5. Now the rook is hit, and you're threatening d7 and d8. This could be it. David and, might and go rookie, rookie one. one looks really tempting here. And he's done it, and he's gonna take the knight, but d7, and the queen gets through, and it's gonna be two queens but, on but the board. But he has to see it. He has mm -hmm. to yeah, see it. Yeah, bold d7. to assume he'll see it. Oh, oh he, he does. It? Oh my god, frame one. Oh, oh my goodness. My gosh. D that's it. He's gonna get a second queen. It's over. Well, it's not over yet, Levy. Okay. We've learned that. It's yeah. <laughs> oh my. That's insane, oh. though. That was very quick. Do not go king g1 because then rook g2. And then do not go king h1. And he's just running into the middle of the board. No more checks. That's that's actually very hard to see. It's not intuitive to put your king in the center of the board this quickly. Nope. Nope, it's not. But he noticed that there are no checks. Everything is covered. And David Pacman... Oh, uh, feels like he's resigned himself. He's slumped a bit. We're oh, listening man. listening in on Finton again. He's not speaking, of course. He's so focused at this point. Going for the checks. Yeah, he's just he's just trying to I mean he's just trying to check every I mean his heart must be pounding. It's like <laughs> anytime I make it to the hexagon. <laughs> <laughs> it's only happened twice, by the way. Serious newbie over here. All right, let's pull this up on the big screen. How do you put this away? You're right, Alexandra. I'm not sure this is over at all. It's two queens versus two rooks. <laughs> I mean, those are both some, some pretty heavy pieces. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, you can't even sacrifice. That's the thing. Sometimes you just, you just give one away, but you can't because you're not winning. <gasps> okay, it's still winning. I, I, I got scared for a second. I, thought I, I was, was trying to figure out why you were freaked out I, about that. I, I, I thought that there was a pin, and I hallucinated. I'm, I'm just scaring chat. That's all I'm this here is, for. I think Pagman is what he did last game where he's just putting him in check to gain some time on the board. He's very good at that. Part. Oh my god. Pawn b6 and pawn a5, and the king is trapped. Oh, I mean, he can sack his queen, but that would be huge progress. Oh, no, not that. This one. This is insanity. This is this is the craziest matchup we might have ever seen in Pog Champs. And this if he plays scary. rook g6, then he has <sighs> maiden one. Oh! <gasps> Made in one. Is he going to see it? Queen back to h3 is checkmate. And he's missed it. And he's oh. given a queen away. Oh. Oh, why did you do that move? Oh, my gosh. This is astounding. This is completely. That went from made in one to plus three. Oh, no. Oh, no. This might not eat. No, th this is. Th we might get is a oh, repetition. No, dude. It's going to go to a. It's going to Armageddon, dude. I, I don't think he's finding this. Oh, he my God. I'm shocked. I'm actually, I'm blown away. This is insanity. I mean, at, at this point, they could just get rid of the nerves, repeat the position, and give, give the audience uh, one That's what they show. did last game, right? So it felt yeah. like they both kind of threw away their opportunity, realized it, and they're like, okay, let me just stop this game. <laughs> this game sucks. Let's go. Let's try again. They're doing it. Oh. Uh Finton oh. changed his mind. He says, well, I'm the one with the queen. I'm going to push the pawn. And he's doing the right thing. Uh, David had to play bishop d7, which is a ridiculous move to spot to win the pawn. That's what he had to do, bishop d7. Now it is winning again because the pawn's pushed and right. the queen can go. And it's easier to find checks when you're the side playing with the queen. Yes. So Finton should be a bit more comfortable because if he panics, he can just go for a check. Yes. Oh, queen d6, and you win the bishop. Just queen d6. Oh, I just mean, queen d6 is not that easy to see. I, 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 but just it's the queen hey, d6. Hey, hey, it's the closest <laughs> check. You said it was easy to look for checks. Okay, he finds mm -hmm. a long check because he's a gangster and he wants to flex on everybody. But it's, but he can move his queen to c7 after the king moves up and win the bishop still. Oh, it, oh, oh my he gosh. saw it. Into but queen takes pawn. Queen, ta queen takes pawn. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, okay. this is crazy. Now David's just going to play h5. David's just going to run with his pawn, right? Okay, no, he's going to check. Check, check for yeah. time. Check for time. The classic David Pac-Man. Check for time. 
He has to. But there now is. the king is coming closer. Oh, no. Yep, just king well, is coming closer. Now he plays h5. Oh, I don't know. He might play rook takes pawn, but you can't separate your rook and king that much. Oh. Yeah, king, king f6 or... Okay, he's checking the king not as Queen solid. e7. Okay, he's just picking up the pawn. H5, there it is. There it is. D8. There's so many queen tricks yeah, here. Yeah, Ludwig, he is going for your plan. He just doesn't have much else here, so he might as well push that pawn. I think Fenton might be thinking about stopping the pawn more than doing an attack here. Because in his mind, oh if he gets rid of all, oh, that he is rid of all the pawns, he wins. So Bishop G6 is... is is not quite working, but he has to see why. And that, that why is king to f6. Vincent's time. Uh, scary. Seconds. Oh, oh, he found it. And the absolute madman, the king attacks both pieces. I don't have lots wow. of time anymore. This is crazy. Pac-Man getting a 10 oh, seconds. He didn't take the bishop! Oh, God. No, no, he... Oh, God. Oh, my. Oh, oh but how does he how does he do this to himself? Oh man, how oh, can I not close this out? Have time to be upset. Oh, how does he do this to himself? Man, I mean, I feel like being a poker player for for a living. You're you're used to so many ups and downs. You'll get through the pain. All right, let's 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 pull it back. I mm -hmm. I just don't want to get caught in the bag. He is. Oh man! Or, or I, guess, I, I guess we were back already. Yeah. Now he's just got to push this. He's just got to push this. Check from Pac-Man. Calling it. Oh, weird. The only way, the only way Pac-Man wins this game is if you if you X-ray or skewer the king to the queen. That is the only way you can win. Queen takes rook in any circumstances, at least a draw. Like now, like don't play queen f4, queen h4. Queen h4 loses the game. It's like the only move that loses. I think. Okay. Checks him. Even Queenie two uh, trading off the queen yes. and the pawn for the rook and the bishop would still end up winning, but it's not the most obvious endgame tactic to see. But he might do it without knowing. <gasps> he lost the game! You called it! No! You called oh, it! Oh my god. Do we, do we know that Pac-Man knows how to do a, a rook king mate? Oh, resign. Why did he resign? He should have tried. Why would he resign? He should have resigned. Oh, no. There's a chance David wouldn't have done it. Oh, that is so, <sighs> so sad. Fenton. Oh, my goodness. My, I, I am, I'm in physical pain. I mean, After I'm... going down so far and then bringing it back and then throwing it at the last second, why would he resign? That's so sad. Um, yeah, but that's, yeah, let's, uh, Let's gather our energy. Let's take a quick break. I mean, listen, if if we get both of them for an interview, that would be that would be super. Uh, we're definitely going to speak with David. Uh, quick break, and we'll be right back. And Welcome back, everybody. Oh, are we? Wh who's doing it? Take it, Levy. Take it, Levy. <laughs> you do we it, Levy. At the same time. All right, that was a. We're I, whatever. Um, we're usually in sync. It's okay. Gentlemen, thank you for two absolutely amazing chess games. I I don't know what I don't know. I don't know where to go from here. Um, well, David, we'll start. You, you, you won. You're moving on to the champions bracket. How do you feel? Just, just how do you feel? How do you? Well, I, I, I feel very stupid because much like in my first game against Hafu, um, I because of a, a mouse click error, I lost. I lost the position. So move forty in game one, okay. where I played. On captures on b3 my intention was to play c3 uh pawn captures on b3 oh 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 the the move that changed the game that's yeah. right it, it was just a mouse click error i, I oh my I, gosh I'm, I'm frequently drawing arrows all the time and it's happened now i need to stop because it's now happened twice that i'm trying to draw an arrow and I took, and what I meant to do was play C3, which in looking at the evaluation would have kept me at plus five. Although I am getting double question marks now when I analyze it. So maybe it was not the best move, but I did not mean to take the pawn. So you need one of those, are you sure you want to do this move buttons? <laughs> yeah. Right. I, like I last two need, minutes. If it weren't, and I, I would benefit from something that outside of the last two minutes, it would, oh wait, that was outside of the last two minutes. Anyway, I don't know, but that was a mouse error. Yeah. I, 
my question to Fintan was going to be like, look, uh, th there, there truly is nothing quite as painful as 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 the ups and downs oh, of the chess games game. in a row. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I, 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 first of all, I've been there myself, and like, um, this is a forty minute, fifty minute. I mean, you guys played the two most hard fought games I know we might have ever seen in a, in a Pog Champs, but uh, do you take anything positive out of it? Uh, because you you are going to be in consolation, but you should be, you know, like there should be a wild card. Do you feel like the? Uh, I don't take any favorite? consolation out of losing, but it doesn't hurt that much. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get too hung up on it. David made less um, blunders than I did at the end of the game, and therefore he won. Obviously, he should have converted the game in the first place, and then I got myself in a position where I should have converted, and it was just uh, he was a little bit less shit than me. So congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually probably the best games uh, because we've had swingy games, but it's usually because they're blundering like 10x the amount you guys were. Uh, and you guys played actually super well, I think, at the end of game one yeah. where you ended up drawing. And I oh, we listened in on you a bit, Fintan. You, yeah, I can hear. You were kicking yourself the entirety of game two. It was like move 30 and you're like, should have closed game one, man. I should have closed game nah, one. It was, it was the only reason I was doing that though. It wasn't obviously David had opportunities to win as well, but uh, it was exactly what Hafu did when I watched her playing against Pac-Man. Like David was a lot lower <laughs> to me on the clock and I started playing quickly with David rather yeah. than taking my time. And it was like half a nanosecond later, I seen that he hung his rook and I could have just taken it with my bishop. And if I had just had a small bit of composure, I definitely would have won that game. And you know, it is what it is. That's uh, been I mean, a popular it. theme where you, the, the tempo of the game beats out your clock's time. So if your opponent plays fast, you play fast. Uh, and I think game two, you were going a lot slower, which was good. Uh, it ended up chewing out a little too much of your clock. So then you had to go fast just out of, you know, necessity to, to, to live. Uh, but still impressive games. And I think you're definitely a favorite now for the consolation bracket. Uh, seeing the rest of the field. I think, I think you... <laughs> I don't, I don't want to take say anything out of winning to that take it, but I think you should. I think you absolutely should. And I think the thing you should take away is don't count yourself out because you were talking like you were about to lose the whole game. And then you were leading both games. You were leading at one point. Uh, so, sure. I, you know, don't take yourself out of the game too soon <laughs> uh, because you, you did find the correct move, I think, to take his rook, right? And have a rook advantage in the game too. Yeah. Uh, and, and nearly, and nearly win the whole thing. When you walked your queen up to get the, or walked your pawn up, I should say, to get the double Queens. That was, uh, that was great. That was a great find. Levy was saying it. I had no idea he was talking about it. And then you did it like frame <laughs> one. It was yeah. available. It was, yeah, we were having a lot of instant discussion. I was like, he has this idea. And we were like, we might not see it. Pac-Man, what was board. your mentality? Did you just never count yourself out? Well, um, yeah, I mean, basically just, I think in the games with Hafu, I, played terribly but counted myself out whereas in this game I played terribly and just decided to keep it going specifically mm -hmm. hoping that at some point um Fintan's queen and king would be lined up I mean exactly what I was waiting for happened it, it only took like 40 tries you know I mean it was like <laughs> yeah and eventually I saw you know that that it was the opportunity to take the queen now I still do think that um Fintan could have won on time because, I agree. You know, we I were know. all surprised at the yeah, I, I think, I mean, it makes sense for, I think, where you were mentally and, and how you had, you know, you won at one point, thought you were done, and then you were winning, and then you thought you were done again. It's very swingy. But I think resigning I there. I, just, I, had, I had a pawn against two full pieces, and I just didn't think. True. I, and there. I think if you're playing against, you know, uh, any, like, international master, it, it is over. <laughs> but if you're Anybody playing against Pac-Man with 20 seconds left <laughs> to find a, a, you know, a rook, bishop, king, mate, it's not an easy task. That's, exactly. It's no, a I, hard I, mate. I was, uh, I was, I recognized that, you know, if I had had two rooks on the board and that's a, you know, a pattern I've had a ladder times mate. or whatever. Easy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But I was very much aware that, uh, I, there was a good chance I wasn't going to figure out mate and it was going to come down to time. Yeah. So I, I would definitely fit in hopefully in future games. If there is one takeaway, it's never count yourself out. Uh, you know, I think you give your opponent a lot of respect and credit, which is good. Uh, but give yourself a little more because you played really well today and definitely, you know, on any given day, it was a coin flip. You could have won it. And I think uh, similar things will happen in consolation and I'm sure you'll tear your way through many of the games there. Uh, but right, thank you. Thank you, thank you again, boys. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, Fintan.
We're coming on great games. Yeah, let's uh let's just look ahead to what's tomorrow. That was 150 moves of chess. Yeah. If not more. That was uh 160 moves of chess. That's a lot actually. of chess. Yeah, wow. Insanity. Uh and both players have made so much progress since the start of Pog Champs as well. Um, I know we were talking a lot about the people who have put in time coming into this event versus people who are, you know, on a little bit more relaxed or busy schedule. So yeah. what a finale there. Yeah, I think it's hype to see people so beat up about losing because it means they're so passionate about a game they just picked up. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if I, if yeah. I, I, I'm not too beat up if I like lose a game of Warzone. I never play that game. But right. you, know, you put your heart into something within two weeks already. You care about the results. And you can just see the emotions on their face. But mm -hmm. let's move on and just tell everybody what's coming up next on the schedule. So tomorrow we're going to see Hathor Julius take on Connor Eats Pants. And the winner of the two will make it on to the championship bracket. We do know Hathor is a rating favorite, but Connor played very well considering he had just learned chess before his game with Austin. So that was impressive. And then we're going to see Wagamama TV versus Austin Show. I think Austin can try to treat that as a training game because yeah. I, it, it doesn't seem that he has chances to make it into the championship bracket anymore, but it's still good practice. Yeah. Then, uh, and then, and then well, we're, we're finishing with, uh, with group C to, to, to wrap things up. Right. So um, we've got, uh, we've got the, uh, the, we got cutie TF blade dog dog and Zexro. So I don't know. Um... Yeah, both those matches will be pretty key to see who makes it out uh, amongst the three: Zexro, Dog Dog, and TF Blade. So I think I think that day is very impactful on who will make it out. And uh, tomorrow, I think, will be just interesting to see how they play chess, specifically Austin and Connor. Well, it's been really fun doing commentary with you two today. Um, I'm actually going to be streaming after this as well, so. Uh, we're going to have a Pog Champs after party at my channel. And uh, I'm only announcing it because we're going to raid my channel anyway. Ah, sure. Sounds exciting. That, that, and Ludwig, your plans for the evening? I'd uh, like to know. I am going to go downstairs and watch my roommate play Breath of the Wild and eat a bagel. That okay. sounds riveting. Levy, any, anything fun on your end? I am picking out with McDonald's later. That's been my plan since the morning, and uh, I am going to do that. Uh, we get a Big Mac, we get we get nuggets, we get the whole thing. And might even get an ice cream from McDonald's. It's that my kind of man. Thing. So uh, hopefully, Chad is gonna also have a good evening or morning. It's morning in some places, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and Pog Champs continues tomorrow uh, with uh, with. Group D, we've gone through it a million times, but I already forgot it. Till, uh, till tomorrow. See you all. Perfect.